Hi everyone, this is um, a demo of rollout feature management solution. Um, and for this demo, we're going to demo uh, how to use the feature management solution on a JavaScript React application. This is a React single web page application. Um, you can see it's hosted locally. It's, a, it's essentially an open source app uh, solution that is uh, kind of a SoundCloud replica. Uh, we could go into every artist over here, look at their music, and see the following uh, uh, their followers. And for the sake of the demo, what we're going to do is we're going to hide this following view tab behind a feature flag uh, and then control that remotely. So to do that, I'm going to start with the code. Uh, and uh, we have three files over here, flag.js, user.js, and authenticated actions. We're going to start with the flag.js file. And we've defined a bunch of flags over here. Uh, we have also defined the following view flag. Now let's go use it. So to do that, that I'm going to go to the user.js file. And this file actually renders this screen over here. Um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to, uh, I want to gate the piece of code that is actually rendering the following view. And this is a piece of code. And I'm going to add the flag. Now I've just added flags that following view is enabled. If this is true, then run this piece of code. If not, just return an all. I'm going to save. Um, and I'm going to uh, refresh this page. And by default, the, the flag was set to false. And you can see that um, the following view tab is now gone. Now, one of the things that uh, was important at all out is to kind of help the developers streamline the work with feature management or feature flags. And so in many of the languages, the SDK is statically typed. So that means you get all the benefits of the IDE, the refactoring, the autocomplete, all of that stuff. But another thing that we've done is that we've added a layer inside the SDK that allows you to connect um, uh, um, uh, your development environment to a layer that allows you to control the flags without going to any external dashboard. So we've connected that layer over here to this button over here. And uh, I, I'm going to click on this. And now you could see the rollout overrides. Essentially, you see all the flags that are in the code, and you could override the original default value. I'm going to set this to two. And I'm going to exit this, and I'm going to um, make sure the application renders itself. And we have the following view again. Now, again, this is just to help developers streamline their work. OK, so now let's go to Rollout's dashboard and see how we can deploy features. So this is Zolot's uh, dashboard. On the left side, we have the main navigation. We can see that we have three environments over here. In each environment, we have the experiments uh, configuration, which is, is essentially a way of controlling all the variable and constant remotely, and then audit logs. We also have uh, the flags overview, which I'll touch on at the end. And we have the target groups, essentially our way of helping you uh, segment your user base and then deploying to subsets of the user base. But let's start back, let's go back to the uh, production environment to the experiment and let's create a new experiment. If I want to create a new experiment, I click on the create experiment, I select the platform, and then I select the flag name. This list gets populated automatically based on the flags that you add to the code. So once you add a flag to the code, either compile the application or run the application depending on the language. Uh, the rollout SDK notifies the rollout servers that there is a new flag in the code. And this is, again, to help kind of um, prevent the situation where there's typos and differences between the code and the dashboard. So um, I've already selected the following view. There's some other configurations that you could do over here. But I've already done this already. And I've already created the following view um, experiment. If I click on this, we can see that now I can actually decide how I want to deploy this, this feature. Now, you can see that by default, for all users and for all versions, the value is false. Of course, I can change this to true or change uh, this to a gradual rollout and then decide in terms of percentage, how, how many percent do I want to open, how many percent of my user base do I want to open this feature for. But let's keep this at, at, at false and let's do something more interesting. Let's add a new um, a new condition, and let's uh, let's uh, Rollout supports multiple versions. Uh, probably more useful on the mobile side. So if I choose a version, I could uh, choose a specific version and then use only any of the operators with this version. But this is a single page web application on JavaScript. Usually, we'd have 
one version over here, so I'm going to use the old version. But now instead of all users, let's do internal employees and then set this to true. And so what's going to happen now is that essentially you can see that this is built as an if and else statement. So only internal employees are going to get this feature, while the other ones are going to get uh, this feature with the false value and essentially not see this feature. Now, at this point, you're probably asking yourself, well, how does the system know what are internal employees? So to do so, we're going to go to target groups. Again, target groups are our way of helping you segment your user base. Uh, you can see that we've created a bunch of target groups over here. Uh, and you can see for each target group on which environment it's being used. So we, we can see that the internal employees is being used on the production environment on the following view experiment. If I click on this, uh, essentially I can see that this is uh, a group that is based out of a condition with an email a regex against this string over here. Uh, and essentially, target groups allow you to segment by any attribute or parameter that your uh, client or, or end server knows about and, and you're willing to expose to the rollout servers. So uh, you can see that we've exposed the email, the plan, the playlist count, uh, and some other uh, attributes. And of course, for each of these attributes, we could use various uh, um, operators. So if this is uh, um, a string, uh, we could use various um, uh, attributes over here, but uh, I think, let's go back. So let's go back to, let's, uh, if we have something that is more of a integer type, we could see that we have different types of operators. Uh, and so we have the internal employees. We also have the beta user, which is a list with the in operator. And I've also created a DJ, which is um, a playlist count, which is other than 100. And this is kind of our power user or most advanced users. So going back to the experiment, um, let's, let's do something even more interesting. Let's add a beta user. And you know what? And let's open this also for uh, DJs. Uh, but let's open this only for 10% of the DJs. Now, at this point, I could save the experiment and then deploy it uh, to 10% of the DJ and then internal employees and beta users can get this feature. Uh, but, but let's assume that I need to restructure the ordering of this rule. So this is a drag and drop interface. And of course, I could drag this to the top and make sure that the order at which these rules are being evaluated is, is changeable. So. Uh, so this is how we deploy features at all out. Uh, two other things that I'd like to show in this demo. One of them is the flags overview. Uh, essentially, these are all the flags that are in the code and then on which uh, environment they're active. You could create as many environments as you'd like. Um, and then if you click on, on a specific um, experiment and an environment, you get automatically moved to this uh, deployment or experiment. Of course, you could turn this feature off instantly for everybody. This is the famous kill switch and then turn it on again. Very simple. And of course, there's an easy way to clone experiments between environments. So if I click on this, I could see that I could clone this experiment from production to staging or from production to de uh, development. This is, these are the environments I have. I'm not going to do this. We already have these experiments over there. Um, so yeah, so this is Rollout's uh, quick demo. Uh, thanks for joining.